Thank you, Ahmed. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Kareem Darwish. He's the Arabic Language Technology Senior Scientist at the Computing Research Institute. Like that. And I'm going to be talking to you about digitizing and retrieving, retrieving basically searching printed Arabic content. So basically, uh, the process goes like this. You have a book, you pass it through a scanner, and then you get some image at the end, and you do some magic to it, and then hopefully uh, you get a user at the end who can actually type something to look for, and then we get some results at the end, okay? Uh, so some things are actually fairly uh, straightforward, and people know how to do pretty well. So this is a book scanner that you can probably buy off the shelf. They're not cheap, but they exist. And uh, the basic technology is that basically you have uh, a book that you can lay out and there's a camera on top that actually takes a picture of the book from, up, you know, from above, and that's it. Uh, I had a video, but unfortunately it got deleted for some reason. And uh, to show you a mechanical uh, book scanner, where basically you actually give it a book and it actually flips the pages one after the other and so forth until you, know, you scan the entire book. And this is another sample of a scanner. This is actually a large you know, scale scanner where you can actually you know, take pictures or scans of large documents that don't fit into the smaller book scanners. So scanning you know, as a technology is fairly mature. We know how to do this pretty well. And then when you scan a book, you get something like this. This is a traditional manuscript. And this is not amenable to OCR at all. Or you can get something that is actually more OCRable, and OCR is optical character recognition. And I'm going to be talking about this just a bit, okay? And this is a typical book that you would get printed sometime in the 20th century or so. So we do the bit of magic that we have, and basically we convert this digital image into a text format. Now, I know the text is so many here, but you know, one of the things that you can see is that, you know, uh, if you just follow through the text, is that the text is not clean. Not clean is being charitable, right? So, it, as it turns out, is that Arabic OCR actually turns out to be pretty hard to do. And there are many reasons why Arabic OCR is actually hard. I mean, for one thing, uh, Arabic characters are connected and they actually change shape depending on where they actually appear in the word. So they appear in the beginning, the middle, or the end. They actually look different. And in some books, and not others, you'd actually get diacritics, and the diacritics actually change shape. So you can get some mark at the top or below the, the letter. And uh, you can get letter combinations that, like lamb and alif, when you put them together, they form a new shape. And you get letter elongations and other artifacts that are due to the way that people actually write. So this is a typical book that you actually get. Look at it for just a second. Diacritics, dots, and maybe speckle and a bit of dirt on the page kind of look the same. And then OCR has a really, really rough time to trying to distinguish which one of them it is. And this typically leads to word error rates that are actually pretty high. So this, the, you know, the state of the art system now is Sucker's uh, automatic reader, and typically you'd get at least 20% word error rate, and these on you know reasonably you know good you know books that you are scanning. This is compared to English, where you know the the OCR error rate is is probably less than 5%, typically one to two percent. So we still have a long way to go to actually make uh, Arabic OCR at par with what we're getting in English. And this is typical OCR output. I highlighted the words that were actually misspelled in, in red. And as you can see, uh, there are plenty of misspelled words. And this is a book that was actually printed in the 80s. We're not talking about something that was printed uh, maybe in the 19th century or something like that. So what are we to do? Before we do anything, it turns out actually Arabic is even harder. So I talked to you about how actually right Arabic is being written. So here's a, just a, you know, a teaser on how actually Arabic words are actually constructed to start with. So Arabic uses a derivational morphology, or basically get 
about, there's about 10,000 routes. You take a route like Kataba, you fit it in a template, so you get a, a stem, and stem is basically the unit of meaning, and then you add all kinds of you know, uh, prefixes and suffixes to it. So you add you know, yeah, determiners and you know, coordinating conjunctions and plural forms and so forth to get actually a word, and pretty soon you have about, 10, about 90 billion different Arabic words. Beat that and they're connected too. So that makes all Arabic quite uh, complicated. And then you get the extra things dealing with like tricks, as I mentioned earlier. So had this been regular Arabic text, we would actually know how to deal with it because you know we have morphological analyzers and stemmers and tokenizers for Arabic that are fairly accurate. And then you can actually feed all the text to these morphological analyzers, then they probably, you know, break down the word into something reasonable and so forth. But if you have so many errors that are generated by OCR, then, you know, basically you're feeding garbage into the morphological analyzer, and then you get garbage out on the end. So OCR, you know, you, this, all these tools that we know how to, you know, that we have for, uh, for clean Arabic text just don't work for OCR text. So uh, this is one of two formulas that you're actually going to see in my presentation. And the rule of thumb is, you know, if you're, re if you're a researcher and you show a, you know, a formula in one of your presentations, then you're smart. If you don't, you're not smart. So here is, you know, one of the, this is 50% of the formulas that I have. And basically, uh, we can actually start by trying to do some error correction. And basically, when you're doing error correction, basically you have uh, a language model that tells you what actually people say in real life, and a confusion model that basically how uh, letters could have been distorted due to the OCR process. Uh, so this is one thing we can do, is do error correction. And when we're doing error correction, we can use, you know, we can look at sequences of text, like for example, if you're looking at English, and then all of a sudden you have X, G, X, X, G, Y, that's probably not a valid character sequence that you'll ever see in a word, right? So you can actually identify where the places of errors could ex actually exist in words. So this is one approach, is to do error correction at word level. And we extend this to, uh, to looking at passages and see how we actually language is generated in the, in, in, the, in the wild here, where you would say, I bought a piece of, and you probably say land, right? So we can actually use the fact that people's you know, speech is fairly regular and what they say is fairly regular in what we produce. So we can use this piece of information to actually enhance our uh, correction just a bit more. And we can use the redundancy that happens in documents, just like you see here, where Kennedy and Kennedy and Kennedy and so forth, they probably refer to the same thing because they, refer, they actually appear in the same document. So you can actually use contextual information to improve your error handling. Uh, there, these are two other techniques that you can use, uh, query garbling and multi-source fusion, where you can actually use multiple OCRs, and if you're interested in these, I can talk to you about them later on. And if you're really lazy and you don't want to do anything, basically you can index words using, you know, sub, you know, word segments. So here I can actually take every three-letter segment in a word and index that. And hopefully, you know, uh, just like the example that I have here, where basically I'm, uh, I got the mistake in the first part of the word, uh, the three other letter sequences that I'm getting out of the words are actually correct. So when the user actually issues their query, I'm actually able to match. And this is a very popular approach that actually people use. So this is as far as uh, the search and correction part of the world uh, when we're dealing with OCR output. The next, uh, the next and the last issue that I'm going to be talking about is how we actually present this, you know, this stuff. So let's just say that you know, we have a system that is able to do good OCR, we're able to search through the stuff, and then the user gives us a query, but what are we going to give them back, right? And uh, since you know, OCR output is, was as lousy as I showed you before, the user, you would give them, you know, uh, a piece of text that, 50, that has 50% word error rate, and the user looks at you funny, like you give them, you know, you didn't give them something that is actually reasonable, and they don't want to use your stuff. So typically, you would actually want to show them the original scan of the document that you actually gave them. But, you know, which image are you going to show them? 
and what's the unit of search? And if a user, if you're going to give the user back an image, what are you going to highlight in this image? You cannot just give them an image and say, yo, look at this. This is what you're looking for. And the user is looking at it like, what? Really? Are you kidding? So do you want to actually ha you want to make your results be a bit explainable, right? And, uh, and the other issue is, what's the unit of search? So if you're using uh, Google Book Search, basically, when you search, they actually give you back books. But is unit books really the right unit of search? Should I be searching for chapters? Should I be searching for pages? Maybe, you know, paragraphs inside images? This is still an issue that we need to uh, grapple with. So the, just to conclude my talk here, uh, so the issues that we need to deal with is A, we have to make OCR better, and we still have a long way to go because we're lagging so far behind, in Arabic OCR, we're lagging so far behind uh, English OCR. And the, uh, we need to actually figure out how to do uh, reasonable representation or how actually have, have to have uh, reasonable uh, GUIs for users when they actually use the search systems so we can deliver the information to them in the way that they would understand and they'll be able to use correctly. And thank you very much. <laughs>